Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory. And first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now in today's part 2 we will talk about probability measures. Of course this will be a notion that will be important through the whole series because we can put the whole randomness we want to describe into such a probability measure. Now if you already know some measure theory you also already know what probability measures are. Indeed, in short, you can just say these are the measures with total mass 1. However, of course, I want to explain a little bit more about this here. Maybe a good starting point is always to think of a rectangle or a square in the plane. This is the overall set we consider and usually we call it omega. And also you should know in probability theory this is usually known as the sample space. Therefore, this omega could be any set because we just put all possible outcomes of our random experiment into it. And then we just visualize this set with the rectangle here where the whole area should be 1. Simply because the probability to get any outcome should be 1. And now a probability measure should also tell you the probability for a given subset. So what we want here is simply a map we call P that maps subsets to numbers. Hence, this curved A here should be a collection of subsets. In other words, the best case scenario would be that we have all the subsets of omega in this fancy A. Okay, now for getting a useful probability notion here, we really have some important requirements for this map. The first thing we already said, we want that the probability of the whole sample space should be 1. So when we measure probabilities, the maximal value we want to get out should be 1. On the other hand, the minimal value should be 0. Therefore, no matter which subset A we put in, we always want to get out a number between 0 and 1. Hence we have the closed 0, 1 interval here. Going back to our rectangle here, this means the smallest area we could measure should be 0. However, all other values between 0 and 1 could be possible for areas. Ok, then in the next step, let's look at another subset B here. Now if there's no overlap between both sets A and B, we could simply add the areas. This means that the probability of the subset A union B should be just the sum of both probabilities. So we want this nice and natural formula in the case that A and B are disjoint. As a reminder, this means that the intersection of both subsets should be the empty set. Speaking of the empty set, what should be the area of the empty set? Of course, the only useful definition should be to choose it as 0. So the probability to get no outcome at all should always be 0. Ok, now we have almost everything we need here, there's only one thing missing. Namely, this formula should also hold in a limit process. This means that we look here at a countable union of subsets. In our picture this would mean that we approximate an area by adding up countable many areas. Hence in our formula we will have a series from 1 to infinity. So this union goes to a sum. Of course for this formula we also need the assumption that we have a disjoint union here. In other words you would say the family AJ is pairwise disjoint. This means that no matter which two different sets AI and AJ you choose, you always have an empty intersection. So with this we have the requirements we demand when we want to define a general notion of a probability. Now to satisfy these claims here we need for the domain A a so called sigma algebra. Therefore let's talk about the definition of a sigma algebra. I don't want to go into the details because I have a whole series about measure theory where the first videos are about sigma algebras. The overall idea is the same, for any set omega we only want to consider suitable subsets. However, these subsets together should fulfill some rules. So we take a collection of subsets denoted with this curved A which means we have a subset of the power set of omega. Now thinking of a probability problem, in this curved A we have all the events we want a probability for. For example, for the throw of a die, we have the event of getting an even number as an outcome. 
and this event is a subset of which we want to measure the probability. Therefore, in this case, we need that event to be an element of this A here. However, what we always want to do is to measure the probability of the empty set and the whole sample space omega. Hence, both sets should be an element of A. Then the next property we need is if we take any subset A that lies in our curved A, then the complement should also be in curved A. The complement in general is defined as omega, the whole space, without the set A, and then always denoted with this upper index C. Please note, this makes sense, because if we have the probability for one event A, then we should also be able to calculate the probability of not A. Okay, and then the third property is not so hard to understand, because you already know we want this for the probability measure. So we just take countable many sets from A, and then the whole union should also be an element of A. Now, having these three properties, the collection A is called a sigma algebra. And usually we would write it in this way with a lowercase sigma. Also important to note here is that the elements of a sigma algebra in probability theory are usually called events. Okay, now, such a sigma algebra is, as I told you before, the domain for such a probability measure we now define. Therefore, let's fix a sample space omega and a sigma algebra A. Then, a map we now call P with domain A and codomain the interval 0 to 1 is called a probability measure if it fulfills two properties. And because we have already discussed them above, we can just copy them now. The first one is simply that the probability of the whole space is 1 and the probability of the empty event is 0. And the second one is what we call sigma additivity. And please remember, for this sigma additivity, we need pairwise disjoint sets. Okay, and with this you know the general notion of a probability measure. And of course, we will use that a lot here. However, maybe let's start with a simple example. I would say, let's look at the die from the last video again. So if we just throw it one time, we immediately know the sample space omega. All possible outcomes, 1 to 6, form our sample space. However, now for the sigma algebra A, you already have the choice. The question here is, in how many events could you be interested? The simple answer would be, we are interested in all events, therefore we choose the power set. Often I would say this is a useful approach, however, it won't work in the case that the sample space is infinite. But also there, one could simply say, I choose a large enough sigma algebra. And then we define the probability measure on this sigma algebra. In our case, because we have an ordinary die, we have that each side has the same probability. Therefore, in our general definition here, this would mean that we count the elements of A and divide by the elements of omega. Of course, in this case, this would mean in the denominator we have the number 6. For example, if we want to calculate the probability of the event of throwing a 2, we get out 1 over 6. On the other hand, the probability of the event of throwing an even number is 3 divided by 6. Or in other words, 1 half. Okay, and now here you see, this is our mathematical model of throwing one ordinary die. And in later videos you will see, we can easily expand this whole model to cover also other examples. Okay, now for closing this video, I give you a small exercise about probability measures. Try to prove that for a general probability measure P and an event A, the probability of the complement is 1 minus the probability of A. So this is a very nice property that immediately comes out of the two other properties here. Okay, I think that's good enough for today. In the next videos, we will cover a lot of other examples of probability measures. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.